Hey guys, this is John and welcome to the channel. I want to talk for a minute today about brutal honesty. Well, actually, I want to talk to you about electrical metallic tubing install. So what does brutal honesty have to do with it? See, I already did this video, or I thought I did, but I had a lot of comments and they had a lot of good feedback that I thought I would incorporate into a redo of this. I actually happened to be relocating the outlets because I'm putting a French cleat wall up here in the garage and I needed to lower the outlets. So I thought I would just pull everything back all the way to the breaker box and rerun it using three quarter inch conduit and THHN wire. We're going to do this the right way. I'll show you some tips that I learned from the previous video and I'll also show you some of the mistakes that I made. So stay tuned and let's get going. Hey guys, editing John jumping in here. See, I just wanted to let you know so that we're on the same page that I'm not a licensed electrician. Well, I have read the NFPA 70, which is the National Electric Code here in the United States, specifically the chapter regarding electrical metallic tubing, and feel like I did the install correctly. If you're attempting to do this type of installation or any electrical work in your own workshop, I'd recommend that you check local codes and regulations, and also consider hiring or at least consulting with a licensed electrician for your own safety. And with that, let's get back to the video. The first order of business is to attach the boxes to the wall at the locations that I'd like to run the outlets. And I'm using four inch by four inch boxes, two and an eighth inch deep, that'll give me plenty of room to run double gang outlets or to put a GFCI outlet in each of these boxes. I wanna do this first because then it makes running the conduit and measuring things out a lot easier. The outlets themselves will be spaced about 20 inches above the floor, and that'll give me enough space here to avoid the French cleat wall that I'll be installing and have the outlets high enough off the floor for protection. As I run this three quarter inch conduit, from box to box, I'm going to need to make a little bit of an offset coming out of the box so that it rests flush up against the wall. Now I'll show you what I mean. So as you see the knockout here, imagine there's a connector here and I put this conduit. If you look right here, the conduit comes straight out of the box, but there's this little bit of a gap right here between the conduit and the wall. I'm gonna to need to bring the conduit back to rest flush against the wall like the box is. So to do that, I'll put about a 10 degree offset going this way and a 10 degree offset the other way to make a nice little S turn to get this to rest up against the wall. Anytime we make a cut on the end of conduit, we need to ream the end because it has these little burrs as you can see right here. And those will potentially catch the wire and tear the sheathing around the wire. So I want to deburr these. To do that, you could use just a set of pliers. We're gonna do the inside and we're gonna do the outside. Now what I like to do is just run my finger around that and make sure there's nothing sharp that's going to catch any of the wires. If you want to add an additional step to deburring, you can take a file or a rasp and just clear out the end of that a little more. So since I put the bend on this side of the conduit, I want to do the same thing on this side going into the other box. So I want the bends to go in the same direction. First thing we're going to do is bend this side up and then we're going to bend it down right here. But the good news for us home DIYers is you don't have to have a conduit bender to create those offsets. You can actually buy a connector like this, it's called an offset connector. And you see when this sits up against the box, you can adjust it in place that the EMT rests right up against the wall and also provides that connection to the EMT. So this little device takes the place of this with this going into the box. Now I wanna show you guys a couple of different offsets. You can see coming right out of the box, I did bend this EMT so it comes right flush with the wall, but then I used a, an offset connector going into the box. And then continuing on the underside of the box, you can see that I also used another offset connector here. Again, because of this short distance, it was just difficult to get a bend in right here. And to be honest, it's the extent of my bending skills is to get that 90 degree turn in that 90 degree turn right there. Uh, back at this box, we're not using an offset connector, but we did actually put a 10 degree bend here and then back in the other direction here. So as you can see from the top, that goes in nicely to the box and I've got a connector right there within three feet 
of the uh, termination of that EMT run. Now the last thing we need to do is make sure that we secure this to the wall. Uh, this EMT is secure right now, it feels pretty tight. However, if something were to grab this and pull on it, it could potentially pull it off the wall. So the requirement is to, is to strap the conduit or EMT within three feet of a box connection, or if the run is longer than 10 feet, every 10 feet along this run. So we just have a short run here. I'm gonna put in two straps, one here and one there. Just have one on each side of it for redundancy. You wanna make sure when you're installing these that you're anchoring it to something solid. So right here I see the screw and nail holes that holds the sheetrock to the stud behind it. And I know that that's a good line to place this strap. With the conduit now run to each of the boxes that I'll use for outlets, it's time now to run the wiring. And for that, I'm going to be using this THHN, THWN wiring. The THWN is a designation for wet locations, which is one of the considerations for installing in a garage. I've got four different color wires here. I'll be using black or red alternating circuits for the hot. I'll be using the white for the neutral wire and the green for the ground. I'm going to run a separate ground wire through the entire length. Technically, it would be grounded once I ground the first box using the EMT down the run. I just feel safer putting a green ground wire in for redundancy in case any of the connections come loose in the future. If you're pulling wire through conduit that's very long or around a lot of bends, you'll definitely want to use some fish tape or fish wire. But for the short runs that I'm going to be doing today, I'll just be able to hand pull these straight through the conduit. Now to make fishing easier, I'll pick one line as kind of the lead line. If I was going to use fish tape, what I would do is bend one of these over to make a hook and then strap the rest up to it. In this case, I'm just going to strap these all together. I also want to mention when you're pulling wire, it's important to set up some type of distribution system for the wire. So you'd see here that I use spools and I just have a dowel in between the spools and I hang it off the ladder. I angle this so that the wire feed flows naturally into the outlet. We don't want the wire twisted back because then the pull will be excessively hard. And as you can see here on the other side, it's easy to pull the wire. Get the exact length that you need without a lot of binding or stopping as you're pulling the wire. As far as the type of outlet that I'll be using, going to put in a ground fault circuit interrupter or GFCI outlet for both this circuit and for the start of this circuit right here. That'll make sure that all of the outlets that I install beyond this point are protected with GFCI. So I'm just gonna take you through how I would wire up this box. This is a two gang outlet box and we've got wires coming in from the feed and then going out to the next outlet. We also have our ground wires in here. And again, I'm grounding to each of the boxes just for redundancy. The conduit itself would function as a ground otherwise, because it is grounded at the first outlet box next to the panel. Now I've removed the insulation on the wires and stripped these, and you can see that the ground wires are stripped back a little further than the hot and neutral wire. That's because the hot and neutral wires are gonna be inserted back here on the outlets using these holes. And there's a guide that tells me how far back to strip the wires. You'd see that I've also pre-installed a ground wire on each of the two outlets because we, we only want one wire to be under each screw or connector uh, here where there's a screw. And you notice on the back of the outlet that there's the brass side and then there's kind of the silver side right here. So the silver side is where our neutral wire goes and the brass side is where the load goes or the hot wire. And there we go, the wires are all nice and secure. So we do have, again, all the screw terminals are tightened down. We've got power coming in from the panel on this side We've got the load going out to the next outlet on this side, and then we have our jumper wires between the two outlets. These outlets will be installed on a crushed corner faceplate that'll mount directly to the box. I should mention too, if you're looking at the ground wires and going, huh, why did he make that so complicated? It's actually because I wanted to use up these. I could use something like this too, where I attach these two into a single one and then attach this to the other wires, uh, just to make it a little easier. So this is the last outlet on the run, and I'm going to be installing a single 
gang outlet in this so I've already attached it to the cover. Another way to install the outlets and this is actually a way that I prefer to use is to attach a single jumper wire on each of the posts here. So here we see we've got the lead wire, the neutral and the ground. Then the wires can be attached by using connector nuts like this to make the connection. The advantage of doing it this way is that down the road if I wanted to pull this outlet out and replace it with another like a dual gang outlet then I can easily pull this off because all of the unit is kind of self-contained. Now just finish tightening it with a hand screwdriver. Well, I'm happy to say that the install is now complete. In total, I installed nine different outlets on this side of the shop over two circuits directly from the panel box. And that's really going to help me do things like charge tools and run accessories on this side of the shop. And I'd like to know what you think in terms of the install. Are there things that you'd do differently or improvements that you'd make from the techniques that I used? Please share those in the comment section down below to help out other viewers. And that's all I have for this week. I just want to thank you guys for watching. If you found value in the video, please hit the like button on the way out. And we'll catch you in the next one.